What's up, YouTube? So um, today I'm gonna be showing you how to replace the oil pickup tube O-ring or another name for it, the oil pump O-ring or oil pump seal, whatever it's called. Um, so, um, what was I gonna say? So, I'm gonna go through a couple symptoms you may have in case you don't know if you need to replace this O-ring or not. So, one thing to do, which I can't show you right now because the car, of course, is not doing it. Now there's time to work on it. Um, one thing it'll do is the oil pressure light will come on while you're at idle or at a red light or whatever stop you're at And then shortly after you step on the gas or accelerate the light goes away So basically when you accelerate the car pumps more oil The pressure increases and the light goes away because the car thinks the pressure is where it should be So um, that's one thing that your car will do Another thing it'll do with that oil light on when the pressure gets extremely low your lifters may start to tick. You may hear a little tick, 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 tick under the motor or under the hood, I'm sorry. That's another thing the car will do. Um, Another thing you may figure out too, the customer pointed out, he remote started his car. And as we all know, it should run for like 10 minutes. The car shut off after like two minutes of it running. And then he got in and seen, oh, low oil pressure. So that's another thing that may point out to you having low oil pressure or bad o-ring so um to explain it basically it's like picture yourself drinking out of a cup with the straw and picture the straw having a hole in it you're not going to be able to drink as much juice or suck up as much if you have a leak inside of the straw so this o-ring um seals off the oil pump in the pickup tube which sucks oil up through the motor pumps it all over the place but being that this o-ring is worn out the pump cannot pump as much oil without it internally leaking. So um, that's pretty much the education side of it. Now, now we're gonna go through the tutorial side of how to fix it. So what you will wanna get is one, of course, the O-ring itself. Of course, the O-ring itself. You also want to get a oil pan gasket because we will need to drop the oil pan to do this. And you know, once you separate parts like that, you want to replace the gasket. Plus, this car has 133,000 miles on it, so it wouldn't hurt to do it. Um, another thing you want to get is oil and filter because you have to drain the oil out in order to, of course, take the pan out. So it'll make sense to do an oil change while you're at it. And that's all you need, and some tools. So I'm gonna hop out and get started. So first things first, I'm gonna jack the car up in the middle at the front by the subframe, get it nice and high in the air, and then I'm gonna throw some jack stands on each side um, behind the wheel well because we have to drop the subframe. So of course we can't have it supported by the subframe. Then I'm gonna show you what's next. First things first, we're gonna start with draining the oil out of the motor. This drain plug is a 13 millimeter. <sighs> wow. Never had to be that tight. Cracked it loose. We just take it out with our hand now. Next, we start taking the oil filter off too. This can be really handy for um those oil filters that are either super tight, which are usually all of them, just because of the heat and time, or if they're in a tight space. Get it on there. As we can see also, the bottom of this oil pan is pretty wet, so it seems like the gasket has already started leaking. So like I said, perfect time to change it, place the gasket. All right, so the oil's pretty much all drained out. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back up because it's not really bad that it's not a thousand percent drained because when I go ahead and remove the oil pan, I'm just gonna turn it upside down and drain it anyways, or drain the rest go ahead and tighten this um, drain plug now it doesn't have to be ridiculously tight like the previous person did just a nice snug all right next thing we're going to do is um disconnect our motor mounts here at the bottom of the motor so we have two bolts here and here 
right there. Those are 15 millimeters. And then we have two more back there that are also 15 millimeters. And then over here on the side, that's um, covered up, or you can't see it right now, are two more 15 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and take those off. Here are the other um, two 15 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna use this skinnier um, flex head, hopefully it fits. If not, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a ratcheting wrench. <clears throat> Let's see, will it fit, will it fit? It fit. All right, so next thing we gotta do is take these two 15 millimeter bolts out. Hurry up. Next thing we want to do, we want to get a jack under the car, and some two by four so we don't damage the training pan. And we're gonna go ahead and support and lift the motor. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put a jack under the subframe. This is the front of the subframe on the passenger side. So we're gonna put this here so that when we take our subframe bolts out, it doesn't fall. All right, so just remove the front two bolts and then you can go ahead and lower the subframe with the jack. And before we actually drop the oil pan, we wanna make sure we disconnect this harness for the um, oil level sensor. Just pull that little tab back, press down, and wiggle it off. Oof, that was difficult. All right, now that we've lowered the subframe a little bit, and raise the motor now we can go ahead and start taking out all the bolts for the oil pan these are a bunch of um 10 millimeter bolts so they go all the way around here um and get to these two over here and so on so it seems we're gonna have to loosen the tensioner because this bolt right here will not come out. Either loosen it or completely remove the tensioner assembly just to get it back like three centimeters or three millimeters, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a 15 millimeter socket and ratchet for that bolt right there. And then I know the tensioner has three bolts on the side of the motor. But we're gonna start with just loosening this bottom one and see what it does. Okay, I lied. I'm actually just gonna use a 15 millimeter ratchet and wrench to get it off here. All right, so what I ended up doing to get this bolt right here out so because it was you know hitting the tensioner basically took that bolt off that we talked about and then i just pried this part just out towards me a little bit and then i was able to get it out because i think it's just absolutely ridiculous to have to take this whole thing off but just be careful while you're prying because of course i don't want to come out too far and damage it so anyways now that we've gotten all the bolts loose go ahead and just 
hopefully wiggle this thing out of here. Um, what is this? All right, last but not least, we have to take this cover off here. So now our oil pan is out. This here is our pickup tube. This is where the oil is sucked up um, into the motor. Travels through here. And our pickup tube or ring sits right under here. So we're gonna take this bolt out, this bolt out, and this bolt out. This is, this here, definitely a 10 millimeter. And these are 12 or 13s. It's actually just this one bolt here and then the 10 millimeter right here. And then you should just drop. Normally, um, this O-ring here would slide right off or it even breaks. Um, this one didn't break, but happens to be bad. So go ahead and clean all around here and then slide the new one on. Got it all cleaned up, slide the new one on. Time to reverse the steps. I'm gonna stick this part up right there. Put that on there. And, and tighten this nut. And then you just shove it up in there. So it kind of locks in place. and then tighten the waist. Now, next thing we want to do before putting things back together, we want to clean off the old gasket here. So I'm just going to get a razor, just go all the way around and get it all off the best that I can. We also want to do the same thing for the oil pan itself. This is not good to uh, find inside of the oil pan. Now normally, it'd be just nice and simple to pick this gasket up and lift it off, but they're held on there with these rivets. There's one here and one here, so just gonna get a drill bit and drill them out and then go ahead and clean the oil pan off and then we're ready to put the new gasket on and reinstall everything. So we have our new gasket. Lay that on there. Now let's put it back. So what I'm gonna do is Lay the gasket up here and just put a, a bolt in on each side just to hold it up. And make sure you don't bend it. All right, so I wiggled the oil pan back now. Now we can take those temporary bolts out.
smokes her out. We're gonna line our gasket up while it's just laying here. All right, so now that I've gotten all the bolts um, put in and tightened, now we're gonna torque them all down to 18 inch pounds according to the LS4 torque specs. And while we're at it, we might as well plug this oil level sensor back in. Just wait for the click. Let's snap this back into place. All right, let's grab the torque wrench. So, when torquing these down, you basically want to work in a star pattern. So you go this side, that side, here, 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 and so on. Then to put this cover back on. How does it go? Goes like that. All right, so now that we've returned all the um, all the bolts for the oil pan, we now can replace the bolt here for the tensioner, which goes right here. Now we can go ahead. Now we can go ahead and um, raise the subframe back up. So just like that. As you see, that motor mount back there just fell into place. That's good, makes it easy for us. Just press it all the way up until it stops moving. And then, here's our one bolt. I like to put stuff like anti-seeds on here, just because these can get very rusty and stuck inside of there. And if you have to come back to this, you don't want to run into a problem. Now you don't need a lot of it because once you spin the threads in, it's gonna spread all over, even though I kind of put a lot on there, but it's okay. And now the other side. Here can be a two person job. So you wanna have one person lower the jack while the other makes sure that these motor mounts fall into place. Go ahead and lower the jack. Wait, go back up. Might need to. Now we can replace these 15 millimeter motor mount bolts. Piece of shit. Hand thread. Now we can go ahead and put this motor mount up top back where it goes. Hey, this definitely has to be tightened. Now we can go ahead and put our oil and filter in the car. Go ahead and fill this up with oil. Right about there. He's making nice and snug. Go ahead and put some oil in the motor. This motor takes six quarts of oil. Last but not least, wanna reset the oil. 
Turn the key to the on position. Done.